If you've been riding bikes for a while, you know what I mean when I say not all conditions are created equal. And one of those less than fair conditions? Dusty. Not just any dusty. Like, really dusty. That's pretty dusty. When conditions are this crappy, you're gonna have to slow down pretty much no matter what. If you try and go the same speed as normal, it's not gonna work out for you, I can assure you of that. There just isn't the traction. What if I told you there's a few things that you can do to maintain some sort of consistency in your lap times? Sounds good, right? I went out and I found an absolute destroyed track for you, put a couple laps in, and try and put together a couple things that I can give you that's gonna help you out and make sure you get some sort of consistency in your lap times. Roll the intro. Let's do it. No doubt, one of the first things you find when riding in these dusty conditions is just how slippery it actually is. But it can be deceiving. Even a small amount of silt on top of the ground can create traction issues, let alone when there's half a foot of it. The drier and the dustier the track, the less control you'll have. So tip number one is throttle control. When you're riding on what would be the opposite of hero dirt, maintaining your throttle discipline is paramount to maintaining consistent lap times. Even just a few too many twists of the old throttle will lower your lap times because you just don't have the traction. In turn, that will upset the rear end of the bike and the line that you're trying to stay in. What I recommend is to put in a couple feeler laps to see what the traction is really like. Once you've got an idea of that, begin to slowly roll the throttle on, on various sections of the track. That will give you some reps of just how much traction you're going to get and build your confidence in the process. Next up, you're going to want your weight further back on the bike pushing that rear tire down a little harder. And that's tip number two. It'll give you that extra traction you may need while accelerating. Seems like common sense, right? Just keep in mind, that also means there's going to be less weight on the front tire. So just make sure that you're not too hard on the rear tire when you're cornering, otherwise you'll just wash the front end out. So when you're coming into a corner, you do want to have some of your weight onto the front of the bike. When it's this dusty, there just won't be the traction to have your weight any further back. But when you start to crust the corner, when you apex it, whatever you want to call it, start to shift your weight back. And by doing that, you're actually going to increase your traction coming out of the corner, but you're also going to start to steer with your rear wheel. That's going to help get the bike set for the next obstacle, whether that's a jump, whoops, whatever that may be. By steering a little bit with that rear end coming out of the corner, you'll gain more speed, you'll gain more traction, and you'll be set for the next thing. Sounds good, right? Oh God, these flies are ridiculous out here. Okay, next start. So, you've got the throttle down, you're cornering like a champ, but where else can we have control? By riding on the heels of tip number two, the next thing is to keep more weight on the back of the bike, making the front end lighter for most sections. This will help because similarly to mud, you never really know what's underneath all of the silt and the dust. If you have too much weight over the front of the bike, or even centered on the bike, you risk crashing altogether or upsetting your bike suspension, making you have to slow down. And if you've ever ridden deep mud before, tip number four, will be familiar to you. The bike is gonna to wanna to move around a lot underneath you, just like it would and maybe it's some deep, sloppy mud. There's things like big rocks, ruts, other bumps underneath the surface that you may not be able to see because it's just so deep. So just understand and acknowledge the bike's gonna move around a little bit and that's okay. Let it dance around, maintain control of it with your legs, but don't be scared to let the bike move around just a little bit and don't try and force it. You're actually gonna save energy by doing that. Next one. And finally, tip number five. Know your limits. You have to be able to read the track and understand you won't be able to push as hard as you normally could. Under really bad conditions, even fast guys have to slow down because the traction just isn't there. The faces of jumps are all messed up and even the landings are sketchy. So oddly enough, if you slow down, you'll actually go a little faster. You won't be trying to right all of your wrongs thinking you should be going as fast as you normally do. Well, 
There you have it. There's five tips to help you out on how to get through some pretty challenging conditions, try and maintain some consistent lap times. Give these things a try. Let me know in the comments if they work for you. Let me know how that goes. I hope you liked the video. I hope it helped you in some way. If so, smash that subscribe button for me. You know, I appreciate it. I don't know about you, but I'm gonna have to go and get some water. It's awfully dusty. There's a lot of flies. Anyway, ride safe, stay safe. We'll see you guys in the next video.